Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the highest requested video I've had as of late and it is a makeup brush video. Now this makeup brush video is going to be pretty intense guys so if you want to take notes definitely sit down with a notepad. I'm not saying I know everything about brushes but I have been using brushes for a long time so I know what brushes work, what brushes don't work and what brushes I would recommend to you guys. So we're going to have a bit of a detailed discussion about brushes today. Now I am not saying run out and buy all of these brushes really in general for a makeup starter kit as in just for yourself your own makeup that you're doing every day I only recommend about six or seven different brushes and I will talk about them but I am gonna recommend a couple of more brushes if you want to expand from those six or seven you know basic brushes that you need for every collection I'm gonna talk about why you need certain brushes or why I would recommend certain brushes so guys you're in for a treat this might be a long one but I hope that I help and I hope that I clear up some issues when it comes to makeup brushes and just an FYI you do not need to spend a hell of a lot of money on brushes you can buy the most affordable brushes and they do all the same jobs that very expensive brushes do my favorite brushes are Morphe, Zoeva, I like Sigma brushes and I like some elf brushes so I'm going to be talking about mostly affordable brushes in this I'm going to throw in two more higher end brushes but again you don't need to buy them they are not like a necessity and I will give you alternatives to those brushes so guys if you want to learn more about brushes then let's go into the video yeah. let's talk about eye brushes first this is how many eye brushes I want to talk to you guys about yes I know it's a lot but I don't recommend all of these brushes I will explain the most important brushes the the first brush I'm going to recommend to most people is a brush like this so it is a flat shader brush that's what it's called or that's what I call it a more expensive one here this is my Mac 239 I've had this since I started wearing makeup this was one of my first makeup brushes it costs an arm and a leg I don't recommend it because it's so expensive I have an alternative here from Zoeva which is the 234 all these brushes will be listed in the description bar below guys the description bar below is going to be your friend because I'm going to list everything that I mentioned in this video down there a flat shader brush is an amazing brush for packing on eyeshadow to the lid that is one of the most basic steps the first step that you ever do ever 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 when you apply makeup the first step that I ever did when I applied makeup was applying it straight onto my lid you can use your finger to do this as well guys you pass the product onto the eye whether it be an eyeshadow or cream shadow whatever it may be I personally prefer to use a brush like this that is just for patting eyeshadow onto the lid basically so a brush like this will be your lifesaver every single brand will have a brush like this the next type of brush I will recommend to most starter kits or most people who want to start getting into makeup and applying eyeshadow would be these type of brushes here these are fluffy blending brushes the bristles don't kind of like spar out everywhere they're quite dense they're quite stabilized in the ferrule and these are amazing for blending out your eyeshadow that you place down using your flat shader brush or your finger or whatever it may be so I have my 217 this is obviously a high-end brush not one that I recommend for beginners but if you wanted a more high-end one you can get that one but these two do the exact same this is the Morphe 433 and this is the Zoeva 228 now out of both these brushes the Zoeva one is my personal favorite I adore this brush so what you use this brush for is you've applied eyeshadow to the lid whether you use your finger or your brush then you use a brush like this to go over the shadow and to kind of blend it out because we don't want harsh lines it makes your makeup look look really harsh on the eyes unless that's something you're going for but if you want a more smoky eye or more blended more kind of professional looking eye and a brush like this is necessary so this is for blending out the crease you can also use a brush like this to apply a light shading or a light dusting of eyeshadow onto the eye or you can use it on its own to apply apply shadow into the crease I hope that makes sense on that brush there's a load of different uses for it I use it underneath my lower lash line sometimes if I want to blow out the eyeshadows I want to kind of make them a bit smokier or if I just want to apply a light wash of color underneath my lower lash line I do have a full full video demonstrating how I use each one of these brushes so I will link that down below that may be helpful but that is the next brush that I do recommend now I recommend a brush like this one the Zoeva one is a much more dense brush this is much fluffier again the bigger the brush and the more fluffy it is the less product it's going to actually pick up and the less product you're going to get all over the eyes so this is something for more crease work again blending out and also for applying a light wash of color into the crease or maybe on the lid this is not for packing on eyeshadows like a flat shader brush this is for more blending and kind of 
blowing out eyeshadows. This is not a brush I necessarily recommend to beginners. I would recommend this one over this one. But again, if you just wanted another brush, another step, this is another brush that you could use. The M504 from Morphe. I usually use this when I'm trying to set my eyeshadow base. I just use it with like a cream shadow and I just place it all over the lid and just blend it all out. I don't really use it that much for blending my crease, but you can use it. I just like the Zoeva one. Ooh, a little bit more for that job. And then we've got this brush. This is a bit more of a dense brush. It's quite similar to the 217 again from MAC and similar to the Zoeva brush. It just has shorter bristles. They're synthetic as well. So this is great for cream products too, again, for blending in the crease. Again, you don't need this brush. It's just if you wanted to add it to your collection. This is the M503 from Morphe. I again would still go back in with the Zoeva for any blending work. And now I want to talk a little bit about smaller brushes. So the smaller brushes are used for more detailed work and also for packing on a little bit more shadow. So like obviously a brush like this is a bit more fluffier than a brush like this. You're going to get less wash of color on the eyes. Whereas you use this, you're going to get a whack of color. Like you're going to get BAM! Thank you, ma'am. Here's some color into your crease or under your lower lash line. This is going to intensify your look. So this one is actually from Sigma. Sigma. <laughs> it's the E34. I do have a discount code with Sigma. Just guys, if you were interested, there's absolutely no obligation, obviously, for you to use it. But it is Drama 10 and it will get you 10% off the Sigma website. So what I use this for is detailed work, like I said. So it's a smaller brush so and get into smaller parts on the eye. I usually use it to apply eyeshadow underneath the lower lash line. And then I might go in with the bigger brush like this just to kind of blend it all out. Again, I use this on my outer V as well for more detailed work, trying to get into the outer V. And sometimes I'll use it in the inner corner just to place maybe like a glittery shadow or maybe something kind of brightening into the inner corner of the eye. This is not necessarily recommended for a starter kit, but I would personally recommend it because I just think it makes your work a little bit easier on yourself basically so if you're trying to get into more detailed areas on the eye something like this will help you out tons whereas these two brushes they just don't do the same work that this one does this is just a little bit more precise and if you aren't interested in the Sigma one this is another one of my personal favorites this is the M507 from Morphe I have about 10,000 of these brushes total lie but I have an awful lot of these brushes what I use this for is the same type of job but I also use it in the upper crease as well just to get right into the crease and also it's great at doing cut creases it's great at smoking out the lower lash line this is a little bit fluffier than this brush here where it's a little bit more stiff so again for more kind of precise areas on the eye and then the last two brushes one is my all-time favorite gel liner brush. You don't need this if you don't use gel liner. A brush like this is great because it is angled. So it's great at just winging out the, the liner and it's great for control as well. So the skinnier tip brushes, they're a little bit more difficult to use. This is a little bit denser and a little bit better at actually doing your wing. And I just find this brush to be amazing. I have a few of these brushes as well. This is the Sigma winged liner brush. It's the E06 brush. I just highly recommend it. There is nothing on the market quite similar to it. And then the last brush for the eye that I would recommend is something like a smudger brush. This is the E21 from Sigma. So again, this is for more detailed work underneath the lower lash line, but I also use it for placing like little pigments into the inner corner or shadow into the inner corner. This is one of my favorite brushes to apply glitter with because you apply like a little bit of glitter glue You take your glitter and then you press it on and you can work in stages Whereas something like this brush like I was talking about earlier will just pack on too much eyeshadow and it'll just kind of fall around the place Whereas this one is a little bit more controlled. You don't pick up as much glitter or as much pigment. You can work in small sections. It's just a lot better at getting right into the small parts of the eye. But like I said, that's the E21 brush. We'll now I'm gonna move on to face brushes. Face brushes I find are a little bit more diverse. So not every single face brush can only be used for that one thing. Whereas I find that eye brushes are a little bit more, because it's obviously a smaller area, you want to be using the correct brushes for the right work, if that makes any sense. But my favorite, favorite, favorite brushes for applying just foundation, and this is a, just a brush, I'm not talking about beauty blenders or anything, is my Sigma F80 brush. I recommend this to every single person because it's really, really, really dense and it gives you like an airbrushed effect to your foundation. It's also really easy to use. You can just apply the foundation like that and you kind of 
buff it into the skin. You don't get any streaks or lines. I find that you can with brushes like this. This is a paddle brush for applying foundation. I just find I get more streaks and lines with that. Whereas with this one, I don't. It buffs it out really, really well. They're really easy to clean as well. I clean it like every week, I'd say, because I'm only using it on myself. And then you can use it with cream products. You can use it with a powder foundation. You can use this with literally everything. And you can also get maybe a second one for putting powder onto the face. I absolutely love this brush. It's a pretty heavy duty brush as well. It's very, very dense. The bristles are packed so tight on this. So it just gives you that gorgeous effect to your skin. Now for setting the face, I love this brush. This brush has been through the mill. I have about seven or eight of these brushes. These are the e.l.f. powder brushes and I use this to set my face. So like with the Sigma brush, this one is a little less dense. So you can see that there. They're kind of shaped the same, but this one has bristles that kind of spar out a little bit more. So I find that's great at buffing in my powder. You can also use this with cream products too because it has synthetic bristles, but personally I prefer it with my powder and I just find it great. I also think it's great when sometimes you might go ham with the contour and you want to kind of blend it out a bit more, you can use a brush like this for that job also. Speaking of contour brushes, my all time favorite contour brush is the Eta brush from NARS. This It's 54 euro, so it's not a starters brush, but it is something if you wanted to kind of amp up your collection or you were interested in this. I only use this for contouring, so it is pretty limited on the face of what you can do with it. That's why I don't recommend this to everybody, but just like I said, if anyone was interested, I adore this brush. This is great at just contouring, getting right underneath the cheekbones and actually giving you a really nice Nice contour as well as contouring wasn't your forte this brush is really really easy to control and use and gives you a perfect contour every time that blends out quite well I use it around the forehead I love this brush it is my holy grail contour brush I don't recommend too many contour brushes but this is definitely one of the ones I recommend and like I said if that brush was a little bit out of your price league the other brush that I do recommend is the Zoeva 126 brush they are quite different these brushes but they can be used for the same thing so where this has smaller stumpier bristles it's easier to control but also remember what I said about the shorter kind of more packed in brushes they have a bit more impact so you're gonna get a very strong contour with this if you use too much product whereas this has kind of more frayed out kind of bristles it's still quite dense but it gives you just a little bit more of a softer contour and I really really like that because again it's quite small it can get right underneath the contours of the cheeks and I just really like that brush I don't think many people use duo fiber stippling brushes for the next job that I'm going to talk about but this brush is actually my favorite brush for blush as you can see I use it this morning I use it every day no matter how many times the week I wash this and I have a few of them they're pink in like one use so that's why this looks kind of messy so I will use this to apply my cheek products because it is a dual fiber brush great at just applying blush to my cheeks you can also use this for foundation as well if you just want to apply foundation you can use it for concealer also and the next brush I want to talk about is actually from Real Techniques and this is their setting brush this is one of my all-time favorite setting brushes I use this for underneath the eye because it is small and it gets right in there you don't need a concealer brush I don't normally recommend them you can use your finger I use my beauty blender but your finger does the exact same job if you just pat it in nicely you won't actually get any lines or streaks I find from that but setting it down is what stops it from creasing and I find a brush like this is excellent for it you can also use this to spread your concealer as well if you want to tell this is one of my highest recommended brushes for beginners and then finally for highlighting now not everybody is keen on highlighting I love to highlight my face but there is a couple of different brushes Brushes you can use for highlighting there is your fan brush I have two here I have a larger one this is from Inglot and this is their 37 or or I have a smaller fan brush this is the f42 from Sigma I've actually kind of drawn more to this little smaller brush lately because it gives me better control of where I'm applying my highlight I find with this one it kind of just applies an awful lot of highlight like kind of too far down the face and sometimes I'm not as drawn to this brush as the little Sigma one. So again, just a fan brush for applying your highlight. I used to not know what these brushes were for years ago because I was like, why would you need a brush like that? That's so weird. But 
Now I know, now I know. Other brush that you can use is something like this. This is the powder sweep brush and this is the F06 from Sigma as well. And you can use this to kind of add a little bit more of an intense highlight or just pick up a tiny bit of highlight and kind of buff it into the skin. I use this with cream products as well and I find this really easy to apply cream products to my cheekbones. I don't recommend any lip brushes naturally because there's nothing I would need a lip brush for. Lip liner and lipstick is all I would do. But if you are freelancing, a lip brush is excellent excellent because it means you don't have to use the bullet of the lipstick on a client's face. You can use a lip brush and obviously clean it in between clients. So I hope that makes sense guys. Really hope I helped somebody with my explanation of brushes. Like I said, the six brushes that I would recommend would be this under eye setting brush, a blusher brush, I would recommend a powder brush, I would recommend your foundation brush and then for the eyes I recommend your flat shader brush your blending brush, definitely a must have. And then to be honest, I would recommend a small detail brush. That's just me personally, that's another option. But they are kind of the six must have brushes and then if you really wanted to add in a seventh, I would go with a more detailed brush. You can clean your brushes, don't forget, in between use. You can spot clean them so that you can use this brush for you know blending out the crease, bl you know blending out underneath your lower lash line. So you don't need tons of these to begin with. I just personally like to have a few so that if one's dirty, I can pick another one. Again, don't forget your fingers are great tools as well, but they're not as precise and fingers can sometimes get a bit messy, especially if you're trying to apply powder to underneath the, uh, the eyebrow. You know, you want a little bit more of a precise brush. That's why your flat shader brush comes in really handy for doing that kind of work. If you did find this video interesting or you did enjoy it, please thumbs it up. Don't forget you can subscribe to my channel down below and click the bell if you want to get like more notifications of when I upload. Don't forget I always like to get your kind of recommendations of any videos to film. That's why I filmed this one today. You can always contact me on Facebook or on Instagram or on my Snapchat, wherever you would like to get in touch. I will talk to you guys in my next video. I love you all so, so, so much. Mm -hmm. Bye guys!